Okay. Okay? Okay. Shlomo Shamir was the commander of the brigade, actually a commander of the operation, wrote a book which was called To Jerusalem at All Cost. And this comes from the, his, uh, the order he got from the chief of staff of the Israel army, which said on the 24th of May, from Yadin, Yadin, who was the uh, second in command of, uh, of uh, the chief of, of, the, of the chief of the head of uh, Ramatkal, no, chief of staff, which said, uh, "You have to fulfill the order tonight at any price, at any cost." This is the heading uh, of, the, of the book. This is a very detailed book, if you, if you, sorry, I can't read Hebrew. But here are all the details, all the units, all the personnel, all the operations, the uh, detailfully fully uh, described here in this book. Now, the order was to free Jerusalem, because Jerusalem was cut off for a number of months already. We only got supplies through to Jerusalem by putting, in, putting through the convoys which most of them were actually uh, shot up on the way to Jerusalem. You can see still the hulls of the trucks and of the uh, armored cars which were following the convoys. So very little supplies came up to Jerusalem in the course of the last few months. So it was a desperate situation because the Arabs were pressing. They had the, their regular army from Jordan came up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was under bombardment and under siege. Uh, Combos couldn't get through anymore. So this was the order. You have to go and uh, uh, free Jerusalem at all costs. So does that, that explains the, um, all of the, 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 the the parts of the battle and of the organization and uh, of the it, it was, using, it, using uh, new immigrants. New, whatever it was uh, on any cost, you see, and it was, it was very, very logical because Jerusalem held at those, uh, that time about 100,000 Jews and they were cut off. If we wouldn't have succeeded, uh, they would have been uh, annihilated. They had no chance of survival because the, any, any uh, unit, any uh, settlement that was captured, most of the people were killed. So between between the two the two battles you had met you gave me the description yeah. of Beit Jesus and Beit Susin and had mentioned to Shamir and had started discussing the possibility of a road. Of a road. At the same time Preparations were being made for a second attempt. A second attack. Tell, tell me about that. I can't tell you all the details. Uh, and the second uh, attack, um, I participated, actually, my, the engineering unit participated uh, by sending a group of, uh, of uh, um, demolishing, uh, demolishing, uh, demolition group to uh, open, or uh, to blow up the, the entrance to the police station at uh, Latrun. Yeah. They've seen the fort. Right. Um, say that again, that whole, that whole sentence, just because that's, I, I think that's an important sentence and I think you stumbled a little. Just say it again. What you were responsible for. Um, um, a company belonging actually to the, to the battalion of Chaim, uh, Chaim uh, Laskov was uh, sent out to capture the fort of uh, Latrun, police station of Latrun. That was their task. The other groups were to take uh, other villages, but this group was sent to take the, the, the um, police station, which was a fortified, uh, it was a fort, by the way. It was built by the British as a fort. I was ordered to, to send out a, a section of, uh, of my soldiers to demolish the entrance to blow up the entrance. Uh, the company sent out, they, we managed to get into the police station. They held the police station for uh, several hours, but the reinforcements didn't come up. 
It's like I've heard from people who were who were in the half tracks and the armored cars in the police station. Is that getting too loud? This is getting loud. I'm gonna go. Can I? Um, I've heard from from people who were in the at the police station that part of the as the battle was happening they broke through the gate on the perimeter of the police fort of the police station and that nobody can explain why nobody knows why but the explosion for to blow open the gate the the inside gate never happened and and for that reason they the, they weren't able to actually penetrate into the fort itself do you, did you, were you ever able to I, 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 As far as I remember, they penetrated into the fort. They held the fort for several hours. They were, expect, ex, they were supposed to move on to capture other villages further in, up, up, mount, up the mountain. But they were supposed to be relieved by a different uh, brig, uh, battalion who never came up. In the meantime, the Jordanians, or the, the Arabs, uh, came, made a counterattack, took back the fort. Uh, some of the soldiers that were in there were killed. Some of them were taken prisoner, and they went to, to they became prisoners of war. I lost in those, in this operation, three soldiers. An additional three? An additional three. Uh, it's all, it's all uh, uh, registered, it's all... Uh, now, after this battle... This battle actually went on, while this battle went on, I was already deeply involved in, in uh, uh, making the road. Because uh, after I presented uh, the possibility of the road, and after we took uh, Beit Susin, uh, I went out with Shlomo Shamir and we reconnoitered together and we found the way of laying a road which will bypass uh, Latrun. I mean, instead of uh, going through Latrun, we could bypass it from further to the south. Uh, since Ben Gurion came every night, as far as I remember, every night he came to our headquarters to see how the battle was going on, because he was very involved in, in this problem of this matter of, uh, of freeing Jerusalem, and he knew that this is a desperate uh, situation. He came up every night, and he, was, uh, he, was, uh, he had the reports uh, about uh, how it's going on. Probably, when he was given the information that we had a chance of making a, a bypass, a road, bypassing Latoon, uh, he gave his blessing, and from that moment on, I was giving uh, free hand to go ahead and uh, do whatever uh, can be done to, to make the road. So I started collecting equipment. I went up to engineering headquarters and I asked for, uh, for equipment, for compressors, for, uh, for, uh, track, for a bulldozer, uh, for um, um, explosives mining um, um, equipment. I was given a, a, a bulldozer, actually the, the only bulldozer that was in the Israeli army in those days. I was giving some, we were sent up to Jerusalem, to Haifa. I went up with the, uh, one of the officers of the brigade headquarters who was a contractor in Haifa, and he remembered a place where we could find uh, drilling equipment for, ex for demolitions because we knew we we'll would have to make the demolitions uh, for, uh, for uh, breaking up some of the uh, rocks. Uh, the army didn't have equipment in those days. There, there was no army and there was no equipment. So he remembered that in Haifa, there is a certain place where, uh, where he has seen a British army compressor parked in the street. Uh, I knew those uh, compressors from the British army because we had them in our unit in the British Army. We went up one night to Haifa, and we found this compressor parked in the street. Uh, I went with the driver and with this uh, officer. Uh, he was deputy chief of administration of the brigade. 
we took with us a jerry can of, uh, of gas, of petrol. We filled up the tank of this compressor which was parked in the street. We just simply drove out of a visit at night. We went up to the dump of, of uh, this officer, Baruch uh, Kertzman, and from his dump we took uh, drilling bits. Because we had the compressor, we didn't have any bits. So he, we took from his dump uh, drilling bits, and we drove away at night to, to Latrun to start uh, working. We got the, comp the bulldozer, and uh, we started uh, doing some more work, more than just uh, handwork, because otherwise we only had shovels and picks and we couldn't do very much. But as soon as we had to do some more uh, heavy work, we needed uh, a bulldozer and we needed uh, demolitions. <coughs> in those, in the, at this stage, actually, I was more involved with, uh, with the road than with anything else. I didn't follow very much. I, I came to meetings, so headquarters meeting and so on. But uh, uh, what I was interested in in those uh, days was how to get uh, um, patrolling to safeguard uh, the working group, because we were more or less in no man's land. So I, I had to, 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 in order to be able to have our soldiers do the work, we had to have some uh, reinforcement to make, to pull, do the guard work, actually on, on a certain, at a certain distance. Uh, we progressed quite well with the, with the work. We, uh, we got almost to the edge of where the, um, end of the, of the ridge was where we had to go down to the valley because uh, we, are, we were on higher ground and we had to go down to the valley which was called the valley of Ayalon where Joshua fought you know. and uh, there we needed more, uh, more, uh, more um, demolitions. I was sent a group of uh, Kurdish Jewish uh, demolition workers from Jerusalem who came and joined us at a certain stage, because they were experts in, in, in drilling and, um, and the demolition uh, work. So we started blowing, blowing up the rocks. At this stage, uh, I believe that the Arabs uh, took notice that something is happening, the other side of the line, and they started shelling the area. Because uh, at, the, at first, in the first few days, I don't believe they realized that we are make, making a road. But when we started uh, making uh, uh, demolitions, blowing up rocks, they, they, they got the idea that we are actually doing some, some engineering work there. And they started sharing the area. So they, we had to stop from time to time and uh, in the meantime, uh, I believe there was a setback because a certain uh, position was taken by the Arabs, by an, a group of Arabs, and uh, they had to be uh, dislocated again from, from this position, which was in the area where we were working. Anyway, we, we carried on with the laying of the road because uh, this became actually the main objective of the, of the whole battle. I mean, so they, they still had, I believe, two battles uh, during those days. But I wasn't very much involved with it because I was involved with the road. What happened is we were working around the clock. We were working, uh, I believe, for, for 10 days. My soldiers didn't sleep really except for a nap outside. And we, we used to get the food brought up from, from uh, Hulda, Hulda, where the headquarters was. We used to bring up some food from Hulda. The boys used to sleep. Uh, mostly out in the field. We didn't even have a time to take a break. Were you also feeling the pressure of, of the, the ceasefire that was about to happen? So you knew no. that you had we to... Knew, we about? knew that there was... Uh, the, 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 they have uh, negotiations uh, concerning the ceasefire. But in the last two or three days before the ceasefire, I started feeling the pressure because uh, I, we started to getting uh, very, very uh, frequent visitors from headquarters. 
um, all sorts of high-ranking officers who came up to see how it's getting on because suddenly everybody was interested in the road. See, the road wasn't the objective of the battle. The road was a byproduct of the Battle of Latrun. Uh, yeah, you said last time in November the phrase that the road was uh, was born by circumstances. I mean, circumstances, phrase. because no, the bet I, I cut you off. Okay, it's, it's right. Circumstances formed it. It wasn't an objective, a, a pre preconceived idea. There was no preconceived idea of having a road laid. The preconceived idea was to break through to Jerusalem. After the battles failed, fortunately, that we, we discovered that we could lay a road. This became the main objective. This became the main obje objective. And uh, I, I started feeling the seriousness of, 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 uh, of uh, the road when we started getting visitors from headquarters. Suddenly, officers started coming up. Uh, um, General Marcus, uh, Colonel Marcus, who was uh, actually the um, top commander of the of the whole battle around Jerusalem, you know who he was. He was very much involved with it. He was asking me every day, "How is it going?" He used to call me "boy" because I was in those days, 55 years ago, I was a boy still. He used to come up and, and, and touch me on the on the shoulder and says, "Okay, boy, how is it going on? How are you doing?" Unfortunately, the last night before, before the opening, I believe a, a day before the opening of the road, he stopped at the, at the, at the site where we were working. He was going to Jerusalem. He was walking every few several nights. He went he crossed the lines to join the Harel Brigade because he was in charge of Harel Brigade and our brigade. That night, I remember about one o'clock at night, he stopped at uh, where I was standing, came up to me and says, how is it going, boy? Are you getting on? I said, OK, yes, Colonel. So he tapped me on the back and said, OK, go on, go on. He left. He was killed the same night. Next day, they brought him in a jeep uh, back to Hulda. Anyway, uh, I started seeing a lot of generals coming up, being very much involved, very much interested in what is happening. And uh, when are we are going to finish, uh, whether we are going to finish. And then I had already information that the next day is going to be the armistice, ceasefire. And we had to hurry up. The last piece of, uh, of uh, breakthrough was made the last night of, uh, before the, because we were uh, given uh, to know that uh, Next morning is going to be United Nations Commission uh, observers to verify the fact that uh, there is a, lo a road to Jerusalem. And what's the significance of that? Explain that to me. The significance of it is that Jerusalem isn't separated from Israel. Because as, as long as you have a road, you have a, a connection. As long as Latrun was close to us, uh, Jerusalem was, uh, was separated, was isolated, because all the settlements around Jerusalem were already captured. Um, there was uh, the, all the settlements around Hebron were already captured by the Jordanians. Be uh, Beit Yaakov, that was a settlement north of Jerusalem, was already abandoned. So Jerusalem was alone, all alone, completely isolated, not, nobody coming in and nobody getting out. So. The, the, the meaning of, of having a road was that Jerusalem is in our hands. Because the conditions of the armistice were that nothing can be changed from what was on the day of before the armistice, or before the ceasefire. You can neither add nor detract. So you, we couldn't, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't, uh, uh, I believe uh, they were not allowed to bring in arms officially, but we could bring in uh, supplies. So what happened is the night before before Hold the. Is okay. Who is it? I can hear them. Are they leaving? Are they going? Staying? 
Okay. Okay. <coughs> Uh, the, the, the day and the night before the ceasefire, they started to pile up uh, supplies next to, to, to the road, so that next, early next morning, uh, supplies can start rolling to Jerusalem. By whatever means, it was mules, it was, je it was uh, jeeps, it was uh, trucks. The road wasn't really finished because uh, you could drive down, but it was very difficult to drive up the slope because we didn't have time to, to solidify the, the, the structure of the road. So there was a lot of gravel and trucks used to, uh, to dig in. So we had uh, our bulldozer was standing by that every truck that couldn't get up was, was hauled up by, by, by the tractor, by our bulldozer. But anyway, when the United Nations Commission came up next morning, they, we were, uh, they were taken to the site. They were shown that uh, there was a road and trucks are passing, jeeps are passing. Uh, there is a water, we had a water line laid, water pipe laid, so that uh, officially it was recognized that uh, Jerusalem is, uh, is uh, connected to Israel. This was actually the, the, the saving of Jerusalem, because uh, the battle failed. So what saved Jerusalem was that we had a road. First of all, officially, it was, uh, it was recognized that uh, it's in our hands. And secondly, supplies could be sent to, to Jerusalem, because the people were starving. If you imagine, for several months, there was no water, no, the water supply was cut off because the pumping stations were in the hands of, uh, of the Arabs. So the water supply was cut off, fuel was cut off, supplies didn't come in. So how long could you hold out? So that, those last few days before the final uh, breakthrough in the <coughs> was, was made, there really was, uh, it sounds like, a, 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 a real sense of urgency. The clock really was ticking it was for you. Ticking, it, it was ticking and it was... Uh, you see, we were working already under pressure, and because uh, I can tell you only an episode that, uh, you see, I started off with 28 soldiers. I lost uh, seven in the course of the, uh, of, uh, of the battle and the work, because I had I lost the first night, I lost three. I lost three at the police station. And one of the soldiers, I told you, one who came, a new immigrant. We never saw the country, really. Uh, we didn't have any patrol to, uh, to safeguard us, because we were with equipment out in no man's land. So the, our, uh, the unit that was supposed to come to, to safeguard the area didn't arrive. So I sent out a soldier on an observation station ahead of us. So they picked him up, a sniper picked him up and killed him. Uh, a, the situation was so bad that, uh, you see, I was left with uh, uh, 28 less 7, that's 21 soldiers, working for 10 days non-stop. Almost no sleep, just enough time to eat something. So one, uh, one day I came to Shlomo Shamir, who was our commander, I told him, Shlomo, you must do something to get me some reinforcements, because the boys are falling off their feet, they can't carry on. So he told me, look here, it's hack. Uh, because the situation was really desperate. You can't, uh, today you can't even uh, reco reco recollect it really how, how, badly, how bad it was. So he told me, look here, it's hack. Uh, ben Gurion was here a night or two ago, and uh, we discussed the matter of reinforcements and uh, help to, to us. So he said that, uh, you know, we have. 100,000 Jews in Jerusalem, and if we have to pay with a few hundred casualties to save them, we still make a good deal. So this was, you see, this is something which only a big leader can say, because a normal person who will say, you never mind, it costs a few hundred dead, uh, then he's considered uh, uh, either crazy or a uh, murderer. But a, le a national leader who is considering hundred thousand against a few hundred. He must make up his mind and he must give uh, the, he must carry the responsibility for it. He gave me this answer and 
I had no, nothing to say about it. I just carried on. It's like I want to try to understand <coughs> geographically the road itself. Um, I know that, uh, that there were certain sections of the road that were already there and that could be passed by small vehicles and by foot. Uh, with, the, with the bulldozers and the excavation and the demolition, that was well, the section that really, that was the section that, that you and your men helped to create, right? I mean, there was nothing. There was no road because uh, I don't believe there was e ever any vehicle up to Bridges before, before we came there. It was probably a donkey, donkey uh, lane or something, but there was nothing for vehicles. What we did in the first days... Hold okay. on, sorry. Okay. <coughs> what we did in the first days, because before we even knew that we are going to have a road, because we didn't really realize in the beginning that uh, it can really be. So in the first few days, we were doing handwork. We went out with shovels and with picks, and we started to, 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 to clear, the, clear a roadway, or make a sort of a roadway so that vehicles can come up. Because I went up with a half track, which is an armored uh, vehicle, which is a tracked uh, vehicle. It can go up anywhere. But we started clearing the road, and we did it quite well with the handiwork as far as Beijing and slightly beyond. But after Beijing, I'll show you here, there is a little, so I'll show you a better map. Second, it's a yes. let's talk about this. Um, you want to come off and well, let him talk first, then we'll come back and get the over. Okay, go ahead. Uh, here is a map of the area where you can see Latrun. Here is Latrun, the uh, the monastery, and here somewhere is the police police station, which you know you have seen. This is the road I was speaking about leading from from uh, Masvia to actually head on on Latrun. If you remember, if you drive in the direction of Latrun, you come head on to the monastery. And this is where the battle was fought. Now, the yellow line here is where we, here is Bejiz, Bejiz, and here is Bejizusin. Here, Bejizusin. This was the first stage, which was quite easy. From here on, we started we started, uh, because you see the topography gets, uh, if you can, uh, but here the topography became more lively. So here where we started uh, excavating and blowing up and uh, using uh, mechanical equipment. You see, the, uh, this was where the main road went to Jerusalem. What we did is we made a bypass, joining here a road which was existing, leading from Beit Shemesh, from Hartov leading to Babelvat. Babelvat is uh, the entrance to the to the roadway to Jerusalem. If you go up to Jerusalem, you see there's a, a, a fuel station on the left hand side. This is called Babelvat, Bab in, in Arabic, and in Hebrew it's called Shar Hagai, the opening of the valley. So w what we will try to do is join this road, come out to this road, and then not go to Shar Hagai, but go up the mountain. There was a mountain road bypassing this area where the Arabs, which the Arabs held, going up to Jerusalem. So well, this, is, this is actually the, the map which we had. This is an old English map, a pre-war map. 
So was the most difficult part then the, the serpent? 